Hey, good morning everyone from Epcot Center, where it is update day. I go by the legend, joined by my wonderful girlfriend Molly. We're gonna show you all around Epcot, all the new rides that are getting built, the construction, mm -hmm. and then of course the Festival of Arts. So we're gonna go and have uh, some seasonal beers, some food. Some dessert. Yes, lots of dessert. All right, starting here with the new fountain, which looks pretty good. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. You know, a nice way to welcome you to Epcot. It feels very retro, but it, definitely the retro future that a lot of Epcot fans were very nostalgic of in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. I think it looks amazing. Yeah. Very good for pictures and everything. All right, let's go look at the rest of the park. <laughs> and speaking of that fountain, it looks awesome in the evening, too. I think it looks better. So let's kick off our update video of Epcot over here in the France Pavilion where they have opened up a section of the, the new Ratatouille France expansion area. Unfortunately, not any of the areas you might want to do. They just opened it up because the bathrooms, bathrooms. yeah, the, the bathrooms in the Morocco Pavilion closed down and they had bathrooms built over here. See the banner there, the ride will open in 2021. When in 2021? Most people say like uh, sometime in the spring, but no one really knows. Uh, here you can see some of the, the new walkway that's going to take you towards the Ratatouille section. Really cool lights. Those are snazzy. See the Skyliner going overhead. And pretty much the only reason these are open, the new bathrooms, they're, they're over here on the right-hand side. But the whole section is, it, it seems like it's very well done. Like it fits in with the rest of the French pavilion. Now I am not that tall, so I won't be able to get any cool shots over the fence. This is kind of the, the best shot that I could give you. See the, the big sign for Gusteau's over there. And it does look good. Now this building over here, this is going to be the new Creperie restaurant, which I'm excited for. Uh, so we just got, as an Orlando theme park fan, we just got one over the Universal Orlando and that's really tasty. So I'm looking forward to the one getting built here. Hopped on the Skyliner real quick to get you the Ratatouille view from the Welcome Sky Ride. Welcome the Disney Skyliner. They're so polite here. International Gateway. We're flying right. to Disney's Riviera Resort. With a final stop I will say this Disney new Disney section of the park looks Resort. really, really good. As you can see right there. We hope you enjoyed your visit Howdy. to Epcot and World Showcase. I like it. Yeah, it looks nice. The sign looks nice. Area looks shooting. really nice. All right. Okay. Yeah. Coming later this year to Epcot is Harmonious, the big new nighttime celebration. And in preparation for that, they've got these giant barges that are going to be part of the show. And uh, right now, they're they're pretty hideous uh, during the day. Uh, when, once the show goes live, they're going to have like fountains and, and stuff like that during the day. But right now, these things don't don't look the... don't look great. It looks like some sort of spaceship has landed <laughs> in the World Showcase Lagoon, and it's That'd not. That'd be cool, at least. Yeah, and it's not. They're not pretty spaceships. I, I do expect the show to be very good, though. So I'm on the Skyliner now, and there you can see one of the the main barge for Harmonious getting ready to get slid into Ladies place and in Epcot. Whoa! Welcome to Disney's Riviera Resort. If this is your final destination, the old Illumination torches are still all around the globe from the old Illuminations Reflections of Earth show. So I would guess that when Harmonious opens, they'll probably be incorporated into that as well. Which was my favorite part, so I'm fine with it. Here's a look at the construction of the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Um, I'm surprised the building is not fully enclosed yet. Of course, this was the old Universe of Energy and the Universe of Energy ride itself. That's just going to be all queue, load station, uh, exit station, and gift shop. I believe this platform here is where gonna, they're going to build the big uh, Guardians of the Galaxy spaceship. And then the ride itself is going to all take place in that big giant blue building over there. You can also see the construction walls are completely up over here. The old Wonders of Life, which become the Play Pavilion. That one, it seems to be, might be still happening, might not be still happening, nobody really knows. Here's a shot of the giant Guardians building from the parking lot. It is gigantic. Which should mean there'll be lots of room to do fun roller coaster stuff in there. See that area there, that'll be the, the tunnel in which you launch into the big building from the, uh, the station. But yeah, gigantic building on this one. Definitely not the prettiest of buildings. But uh, I'd much rather have an ugly building and a fun ride than a pretty building and a medium ride. Here's a pretty wild view of what was Innoventions 
east or west? I think this was west. West. As you can see, the building's pretty much been gutted. I think this whole side's getting demolished. It's just taking quite some time. I believe this is where like the, the Moana water walkthrough kind of thing is gonna go. And a bunch of trees, maybe a new fountain. I am not really sure. Those plants have changed a lot. They have. But, uh, but I think those plants are still yeah. stuck. But uh, the construction is just wild to look at. And it seems to be taking a very long time. They have time. Yeah, they, indeed they do. But boy, it is pretty ugly. I wanted to turn it on one more time over here just to get a kind of the weird angle where you could see all the way through. Like you were over by Spaceship Earth, you could see over to the pyramids of Journey into Imagination. Over here by Guest Relations, you can see these buildings are also rather gutted. Now these buildings, I believe, are staying. They're just going to get all new things inside of them. And a major, major remodel. As you can see, the, the demolition has been much cleaner over on this side. Over here by Mission Space, you can see that little construction wall over there. That is going to be where you enter for the new Space 220 restaurant which looks just like a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely going to be like probably the most kid-friendly restaurant in Epcot. I guess you have the princesses and, and Mickey Mouse. But I was going to say the non-character meeting room. Yeah, but I mean, you kind of get character stuff anywhere. Going to eat in outer space is going to be really neat. Right. And uh, when's that going to open? Nobody knows. I think it was supposed to open like last year in February. Now, who knows, but it should be really cool when it does. Hopefully soon. That green building there, in between Test Track and Mission Space, that is where the new restaurant's gonna go. You Looks see, giant. Yeah, you can see that big curved wall. That'll be the wall with the giant screens that makes it look like you're in outer space. So this is pretty neat as part of the Festival of the Arts. They've added some street art here in the UK pavilion, featuring the, the folks from Robin, Robin Hood. Hood. And then if you look over here, a little tricky with the glare, but you can see uh, Peter Pan's shadow. Over in the Italy Pavilion, you do have a little uh, Jiminy Cricket added on there. I absolutely love this one here in Germany. You can see little Pascal. He's like camouflaging. Yeah. Some street art in the China Pavilion. You have the dog from Mulan right here on top of a bench by the window of the store. As the sun's going down over World Trade Coast Lagoon, I did find uh, the next street art here in the Norway Pavilion. And it's the snow geese. Found the street art over here in the Mexico Pavilion. The dog character from Coco. So we kind of got this working. They have a lot of chalk art, including this one you stand in. And from this angle, it kind of looks like Molly is holding a couple of buckets of water. It, it took a while to get the shot, and it just still doesn't quite work. <laughs> it's cool, though. Oh, yeah. So the section in between World Showcase and Future World is all chalk art. I'm going to show some of our favorites. I do like this big uh, beetle-type bug. Mickey Mouse looks really good, and I like the character from Soul here. And then uh, this, this child eating soup. There's a couple I really like over here. You've got a rabbit. And if you go down a little bit, you've got a very, very vibrant Cheshire cat. So like with any festival here at Epcot, the food is a big, big element. So I got a whole bunch of booths around the World Showcase, starting here in Mexico, where I don't think I'm gonna get any drinks, but I'm definitely gonna get a pork belly pastor. Like you put pork belly on anything, I'll probably buy it. All right, so here's that pork belly. Uh, looks delicious, but also a tiny portion for $7.50. So it was absolutely delicious, which is nice. It is really good. But uh, very tiny. Uh, I would take like a, maybe 10 of these as a meal. <laughs> Next up is Pop Eats. Uh, pretty good menu here. You got two different types of grilled cheese with tomato soup, uh, shrimp ceviche, an almond frangipan cake, uh, popped art, and then some uh, some drinks. So we got quite a bit from this booth, starting with the beer, the uh, Playa Linda Rainbow Sherbet Dream Ale. I'm excited for that. They do put like a sparkly syrup in there so you could see some glitter. 
as well. I'm not sure if that'll come out on camera or not, but it is in there. Uh, something I always love, it's an almond frangipan cake, which um, those are delicious. And then a case of, this definitely looked better in the picture, is the French onion and bacon grilled cheese sandwich. And in the picture, it comes with like this really cool like poppy souvenir like cup, like yeah. soup can cup. Well, they don't have those. You get this. this Plain cup. cup. Yep. Yeah. Look at this, it glitters. I know. It's so glittery. This booth definitely gonna be hard to beat. Everything's good. Everything's really good. Uh -huh. Love the dessert. Uh, the sandwich, really, really delicious. Really good. And then the beer is beer is also beer, it doesn't taste like beer. No. Like when they say rainbow sherbet, it makes it like it tastes more like a rainbow sherbet cider or sour than it does a beer. Mm -hmm. But everything this is this is definitely a winner of a booth. Definitely. No. Next booth is decadent delights, and uh, I'm tempted by raspberry soft serve. But I think I'll just go for the beer flight because I'm really interested in one of the beers in particular, peanut butter porter. So I think everything in the beer flight is pretty good. I would definitely say the uh, the Scrimshaw Pilsner is probably my least favorite, but I really like the MIA Beer Company Deco IPA and then the Saugatuck Brewing Company's peanut butter porter. The next booth up is the deconstructed dish. So there's like a deconstructed BLT, a deconstructed Reuben, and what we got here a deconstructed cheesecake. So it's like a cookies, cheesecake, little pearls, and then some really good looking strawberries. Looks delicious. Which makes sense because one of your favorite desserts, Molly, is cheesecake. Cheesecake, yep, yep. Molly, some quick thoughts on the uh, the deconstructed cheesecake here. It's really good. Uh, the cheesecake cream is so good, and the strawberries are so fresh, so highly recommend. I like taking the little cookie thing and then and dipping, dipping it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It is all beverages here at the Citrus Blossom. There's a bunch of wine, some sparkling wines, a shake. We went to the beer, which is a Lost Coast Brewing Company tangerine wheat. And how is it, Molly? It's uh, very tangerine-y. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's decent. And a uh, really, really cool beer tap. That, that is fantastic. Over by Canada now is the Masterpiece Kitchen, which we got a dessert. Which looks lovely. Yes, it, it, the dessert itself, it looks like a piece of art. Uh, this is a vanilla, rose water, and pistachio panna cotta. And more glitter. And more glitter. All right, so this one I would label as just okay. Now that rose on the outside, it's actually a chocolate shell, and you kind of crack it open to get to the panna cotta on the inside. Yeah, definitely uh, more artsy and pretty. Than yeah, see, it's, 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 it's better for your Instagram page than it will be for your taste buds. Here at the Refreshment Port, they do have a couple of different options that are special to the festival. I believe we're special for a limited time. Lobster poutine sounds really, really good if you're into lobster. Between the lobster and then the lobster bisque cheese sauce and fries. I went with the Barrel Monk's Raspberry Beret beer, and it's nice. It's not an overwhelming raspberry beer. No. It's, it's kind of like a hint of raspberry, but it's, it's still really nice. About 75, 80 degrees out today, so it's really nice to drink in the heat as well. A very strange menu here at the Painter's Palette. Steak tartare, which is like raw steak. Beet tartare, a pistachio cake, that has potential. And then look at these beverages. Cali Moxto, which is red wine and Mr. Pib. It, it intrigues me because I don't know how that like would uh, taste. I don't, I don't know. And then a frozen rusty nail for $15. I don't know about this booth, guys. <laughs> Inside the World Showplace Pavilion, which has been open for the past couple of festivals, is a booth called Festival Favorites. Serving up Remy's Ratatouille, which makes sense as that ride should be opening soon, maybe. A charcuterie board. A, uh, a blood orange tart, and then look at that, that chocolate chip cookie. They've also got some beverages, and what I really, what I really like here, they do a Neapolitan beer flight. So there's a strawberry beer, a vanilla beer, and a chocolate beer all in one flight. So at this booth, we went for a little something for Molly with Remy's Ratatouille, and something for me or the both of us here with the Neapolitan beer flight. And they're all served on nitro, so you're gonna be, you can see on top, a little bit frothier than normal beers. So my beer flight here, just kind of okay. All three beers, they're not bad, but none are particularly good either. Molly, how was the ratatouille? It was really good. I've only had ratatouille once and it was on a cruise ship, but this is really good. Food looks pretty good here in France for the festival. 
They have a, uh, a black truffle croissant that looked good. A, uh, like a raspberry chocolate molten cake. But we went with something that we know Molly will definitely like. Cheese. Melty brie cheese in a bread bowl. Wonderful. In between Morocco and France is the Vibrante and Vivodio. Maybe that's how you say it. They got a chilled seafood cocktail, a blue corn papusa, and then what we went for, which that is a snazzy looking dessert. That is very snazzy. Look at that mask. Yeah. The passion fruit mousse. It's about four seventy five. So this passion fruit mousse is not quite what I thought. I was always going to be like all mousse, just in like a bar form. No, it's like mousse over like a spongy cake. And then there's a filling inside, but it is super tasty. It's really good. Near the Morocco Pavilion is the Mosaic Canteen, which uh, some kind of shake up over here. This used to be all run by third parties in the Morocco Pavilion between the restaurants and the stops. Uh, Disney has taken it all over. Most of the shops and restaurants in the pavilion are closed. And now this booth is being run by Disney and not the third parties. And uh, it looks better than most times. Molly, what kind of lamb? We got a lamb shop here. A lamb, yeah. That looks really good. There's also a uh, blackberry hard cider and a, a dark lager. Looks good. So I am not a fan of the 1906 Dark Reserve no. Especial Amber. I really like the blackberry hard cider. That's nice. And then the lamb's good. It's a lot of flavors. Yeah, a lot of spices in Sometimes there. Sometimes you get more more Moroccan type flavors. Some it's kind of a very sweet, mm -hmm. but it, it's tasty. It's delicious. In Japan for the festival, there's a Goshiki booth, which has a uh, sushi donut. They also have a, a vegetable yozo, but we got the Stone Garden, which over here, that is a red bean mousse. And it comes with uh, like uh, cookie pebbles and chocolate rocks. The idea is that you turn this, you make your own art to sort of resemble a garden much like this one here. Very creative uh, very in the Japan Pavilion. Very, very different. Well, we'll show you how we do it in a minute. Well, that is, uh, that's what you're supposed to make it look like. And uh, here's what we ended up with. We nailed it, I think. Nailed it. I did not anticipate I was gonna like red bean mousse. And I know me, because that is that is not to my taste buds. I don't mind it. I think it's very interesting. Well, the non-chocolate rock portions of this can be yours then. <laughs> In the American Venture Pavilion is the artist table. Now, I don't think we're gonna get any food over here. They do offer a beef wellington, a scallop, and a jumbo artist cookie. But the beverages sounds awesome sipping chocolate, three different types of beer, and then what I'm really excited for is this. Symphony and Chocolate Flight. Cream liqueurs paired with sipping chocolates. So here's what we got from America. I love framboise, so to get that on draft, I couldn't pass that up, so we went for a small framboise. And then this is the Symphony and Chocolate Flight. It's about a shot of cream liqueur, and then the rest is filled up with a sipping chocolate. So we've got a Mozart dark chocolate cream liqueur with a dark sipping chocolate. Mozart white chocolate cream strawberry liqueur with milk sipping chocolate and Mozart white chocolate vanilla cream liqueur with a white sipping chocolate. And look at those like little holders. Yeah. They're so cute. So I'm a really big fan of this. I love, love, love cream liqueurs. And uh, these are really nice cream liqueurs too. Yeah. Then you get the sipping chocolate on top. So this is a, a must try for me. The strawberry one definitely tastes more mm -hmm. Liquor, liqueur. Yeah, you taste, you taste the liquor a little bit in that one, yeah. but most of them you don't. And while you can sample a lot of beers and a lot of wines at the festival, you really can't sample many liquors like you can with these. Here in Germany, the uh, booth is Cuisine Classic. And uh, they got an interesting menu. They got short ribs, chicken, opera cake. And then they got wine, and then really interesting, a play on rosé flight. So the Germany booth here, this looks like a winner. We got a short rib, but a really, really nice presentation to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a red wine braised short rib. Mm -hmm. And then there's a play on rosé flight. This is very unique, very interesting. So you've got a rosé hard cider from uh, Three Daughters, an 81 Bay Brewing rosé blonde ale, and then a frozen rosé. So a very neat, very neat. Very different. So in a surprising review, our favorite drink is the frozen rosé. Which makes sense for me, not for you. No. 
And then the, the short ribs are really, really good. Super tender. Yeah, they fall the, apart. The, the sauce is really nice as well. Here at the refreshment port, uh, they got a couple different, I believe these are specialty options, like a plant-based bratwurst. The brown sugar stuffed pretzel, that sounds very interesting. We went with something very different. It's a very blue beer. It's a blue raspberry blonde by Playa Linda, and it is the bluest beer I've ever seen in my life. But the weird thing is, it tastes pretty normal. It like, tastes like blueberry to me. Now that might just be, do you think it's just because it looks I so think blue? It is fact that it's, it's a mental thing like it, there's it definitely tastes more blonde ale yes with like a hint of blue raspberry Hello. or blueberry now in the mexico pavilion the donald animatronic at the end of the ride it's been missing for a while he's been replaced with flowers his voice is still there but donald not now now we're by the epcot experience where if you're talking about things that are happening and not happening they have removed the mary poppins section from the film so that Definitely seems like it's cut for budget. But something I really enjoy about this, they have a really nice collection of seasonal craft beers. So I'm drinking a uh, a pina colada sour. Which is good. Yeah, it, it's really neat because the pina colada creaminess takes away some of the bite of the sour. But they got both seasonal beers and uh, seasonal hard ciders in here as well. Including one by Cider Boys, who's probably my favorite hard cidery. Everything I've had from them has been really good. So there's a whole bunch of art booths throughout the festival, as it is the Festival of the Arts. I like these here at the Wyland Galleries, where you have sculptures, and uh, really interesting sculptures that go like into and out of what looks like water, but is uh, definitely glass. Turtles, orcas, mermaids, really neat. More really neat stuff here at the, the Wyland booth, as you get a, a little mermaid table. Now, some of the stuff not particularly new, but the, the little mermaid table is really neat. And then over here they've got one with I really like done up like kind of like brass with these seven doors on it. Yes, this one I've seen. Before. Yeah, and then uh, some of the door sculptures themselves. This is a William Silver's booth. Uh, very traditional look to the animated movie art. But uh, it's, it's done very well. Like if you're a, like, I would say more of a Disney purist, this would definitely be a very good booth for you as it stays very true to the animated style of these films. This booth's just labeled Disney's Artist Gallery, so there's a bunch of different artists. I like the, the Darkwing Duck one myself. Yeah. Uh, you got Disney Dogs. I like that one. And then some very artsy style stuff here, like Mickey and Minnie with Dole Whips or Mickey and Pluto riding Space Mountain. I like poop. You yeah. Can I get a picture with you? I've also got a couple more over here that are from not as not as well popular Disney films. But I love this Hercules. The Hercules. Oh, so cool. You got Tarzan. <laughs> and then uh, Emperor's New Groove. Uh, another Disney artist gallery booth, and I really like this one with Mushu and the China Pavilion in the background. And as a big fan of the Muppets, they've got. Uh, Rainbow Connection, like Kermit the Frog. Classic. Yeah. More fun ones here. You've got uh, Mowgli and Baloo hanging out at Typhoon Lagoon. And then a very stylized version of Figment here. Here's something you never see. Rocketeer. You do have more art in the back of the World Showplace, including this really cool one of Buena Vista Street over at Disneyland. Or I guess actually Disney visiting them in the 1930s. Take your pick. You've got a really cool series of paintings here with the various Disney villains on it. Do a very interesting stylized Disney parks kind of stuff here. Big Thunder Mountain, the Jungle Cruise, Matterhorn bobsleds, Pirates of the Caribbean, Storybook Land Canal Boats. I do like this. The, you come seeking adventure in Salty Old Pirates, do you? Muppets Yeah, the Muppets one's pretty neat. I'm not a big fan of Walter, though. I don't like that Walter's in there. Uh, I like a Goofy and Max. And then that that's very you, Molly, over there. That is a true statement right there. Everything is really better than cheese. So in the World Showplace Pavilion, they do a couple of shows. There's a Disney piano player, and then there's an acrobat show called uh, Art Defying Gravity. We do have a lot of really cool stuff here in the World Showplace Pavilion, right when you come in. Tiki Room, Mary Poppins Penguins. But I love this, you can get the, uh, 
the ticket book, like the classic A through E ticket book with your name on it. Which would work perfectly for my name. Yes. Yes, it would. Yeah. It's great. So over here in the garden area of the UK Pavilion, we've got a whole bunch of these, which in normal years when they're doing character meet and greets, these pictures would all be next to the character. But can we talk about the easel? The that Maurice fills. one is really cool. Yeah. That's that is really awesome. I also like how they're all painted by like their friends. So this is Maurice, Doc, uh, Flora, and Mayweather, except for Donald. Donald's picture is done by Donald. Which makes sense because he's number one. So one thing I always enjoy during the Festival of the Arts, there's a scavenger hunt where you have to search through every pavilion to find a piece of classic art that they then put figment into. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to walk around the pavilion and then to see which the piece of art is. This is the one here, and uh, I like it. Now you can buy uh, like a scavenger hunt thing and get a prize at the end, but you're better off just walking just around. Yeah. Yep. So something interesting they uh, do during the Festival of the Arts, normally the Voice of Liberty always performs inside the American Venture, but right now, based on the ongoing global health situation, they can't really have them in there. So they're performing out here, and they're singing only Disney songs. So right now they're doing Moana. Uh, they also do other stuff over here, like Animation Academy and uh, the Mariachi Cobra from the Mexican Pavilion. So something they started doing here at Mouse Gear, which I think is really interesting, is they had this offer called Save Time with Mobile Checkout. Essentially, you scan everything you want to buy with the app, and then you just kind of leave. Yep, it gets charged with your credit card that you had linked to your My Disney Experience app. It's a, it, that's a very futuristic. -y. Yeah, it's nice though. Yeah. Now speaking of Mouse Gear, let's check out some of the merchandise that is available. Uh, Molly, these are lounge fly backpacks, mm -hmm. and uh, must be a Disneyland thing because it looks like it's all Magic Kingdom characters, and then there's DJ Rex. DJ Rex. Uh, I like it because it's got Big Al. We've got some interesting stuff here for uh, ladies. I do like the, the Up sweatshirt's nice. Uh, Molly, I think this is your favorite, like the Disney Forest, uh, forest Friends. Friends. Yeah, look at it, it's so cute. I don't know why um, Jimmy Cricket No, Jimmy Cricket there. doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But everyone else, it's really yeah. cute, like Miko. Because they have them for uh, dogs as well and yeah. cats, but the Forest Friends ones are very different. Very different. Uh, you could also, if you like it, you could get it on a, one of those little backpacks. A uh, brand new piece of merchandise that I believe came out this week. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Numio, Numimos. Uh, essentially, it's kind of like your 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 traditional Disney characters, and then you could pick out little outfits to dress them up into. And uh, it's an interesting idea. It feels very very Duffy esque to me. Very Build a Bear esque. Yeah. I do like how they have, like, they don't sell the hang glider, but I like how they have uh, Mickey and Minnie Soren or uh, Stitch and Friends watching some fireworks. But yeah, I could see why this would be popular. And you could even buy them little backpacks so they could be fashionable. Uh, Disney always tries to pass up like a new color of stuff every six months, every year. Uh, this time it's Wishes Come Blue, which is actually really cool. It's a fundraiser between Disney and the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. So this is a, you know, one of the ones that I def you definitely feel better about. And it's a pretty color. Mm-hmm. Well, if you love both uh, cooking and Woody's Roundup, well, this section's for you. You could be Woody or Jesse, and then have a bullseye pot holder. Or you could be both. I could be Jesse, you could be Woody. Yes. And I cook out. <laughs> more uh, his and hers cooking stuff. You got Prince Charming, Cinderella, but the potholders for this one are the ugly stepsisters. Anastasia. Uh, Disney must sell at all times a minimum of a bazillion coffee mugs. I think my favorite one right now is this one here for the Alien Swirling Saucers ride. You do have a line of uh, merchandise here from the Disney Pixar film Soul. Which I enjoyed. I thought yeah, it was a really good movie. It was really good. I'm not sure how many kids will be craving for like plushies or action figures from it though. The cat. The cat would sell. You do have a very fun line of plush here where it is sort of uh, characters from all over the world. And it's interesting because some of them, like Mickey here, his footprint says Disney Store München. Whereas Lumberjack Mickey, he's from Epcot, Canada. Guard Mickey is from the Disney Store in London. 
So interesting how they're from different spots. Yep. They have a lot of really cool stuff here in the Art of Disney store. A lot of sculpture stuff, like Maleficent and the Minions. This one I've never seen before, the uh, from Little Mermaid, like the Poor Unfortunate Souls. A lot, a lot of kind of eviler stuff. More Minions. I couldn't even tell you what, what movie those guys are from. No, I don't know. I'm sure the comment section will let me know. And I love Pain and Panic over here with the Hercules doll and uh, Sippy Cup. So one thing that's really fun about the Epcot Festival of the Arts, they have a whole bunch of these art kind of things you could walk into. A lot of them are famous paintings <laughs> and just give you some goofy looking fun pictures. This one's located over between uh, Canada and England. So one of my favorite types of dogs is corgis. I had one growing up as a kid and uh, they have this shirt for sale over in the UK pavilion and an uh, army of plushy corgis. Over here by the, the International Gateway, there's a quick stop at Mermaid Lagoon on the way to Skull Rock. Now Molly could go eat cheese. Here's uh, Molly crossing the Delaware. <laughs> and now Molly goes into two of the most famous pictures of all time, the Scream, and then the Mona Lisa. So there's no character meet and greets right now at Walt Disney World, so instead they're doing cavalcades. And this one is a horse-drawn carriage with a whole bunch of princesses involved. <laughs> and nothing really Epcot the theme park related, just kind of some cool nature stuff. There is so many birds nesting in these trees here. Even if you look at the far tree over there, there's a, a different type of bird. And that'll do it for a day here at Epcot Center. Um, it was really fun. I haven't yeah. been here in a little bit. And uh, it was good to see all the construction around the park, all the new rides and stuff like that coming. Obviously, it's pretty ugly right now, but give it a couple of years, it should be a much better place, I mm -hmm. think. Um, we did a lot of things at the Festival of the Arts, or the Taste of the Epcot International Festival of the Arts. Uh, Molly, what was your favorite stuff? Um, my favorite food was the tree. That's not a surprise. Yeah, the bread bowl not, full of yeah. cheese. I mean, I like the pork too, the pork belly, but the amount that you got yeah. was not the best value. Um, I did love the um, rainbow sherbet glitter drink at yes. the top part. Yeah, that um, was a very nice beer. Yes, that was definitely my favorite drink. Uh, for me, I really, really like same booth that grilled cheese. That the booth French was very onion, good. The French onion with bacon grilled cheese, yes. and uh, the tomato soup for dipping. That I really enjoyed. I think everything in that booth I really enjoyed. Yeah, that was probably my favorite. I think that goes down as our favorite booth. Yes. I would say for my favorite drinks, I love that uh, the cream liqueur flight with the sipping chocolates. That was so wild, so different. I really like that. Uh, I don't even want to know how much we spent. <laughs> oh no! We spent $174! But in all seriousness, it was a really fun day here. And uh, without you guys watching videos like this, Molly and I wouldn't be able to come and have a splurge day here at Epcot Center. So thank you so much for watching this. If you are heading to Epcot soon, you got any questions or comments, let us know in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching, guys.